Hey guys, it's Trevor with Shadow Systems. It's Technical Tuesday, and I was feeling a little bit nerdy today. So I figured we'd spend a little bit of time and nerd out for a moment on an ammunition question that seems to pop up quite a bit. Uh, so the question usually goes something like this. Uh, in its most basic form, it's what kind of ammo should I shoot in my Shadow Systems pistol? Um, if it's a little more technical, it might be uh, what distance are your sights regulated for and at what bullet weight? So, you know, the idea being that they really only work best with a certain bullet weight and at a certain distance. Um, I understand why people a uh, ask those questions and ammunition selection is really important, but I think what people should be focusing on with ammunition is number one, getting it, um, because it's hard to come by right now, I get that. Uh, but after that, it's like, what do you want the projectile to do to the target? Do you need a, a uh, defensive load where you need terminal performance? Do you need just a target load that just goes bang every time, or I guess most times? Um, and, you know, what are your cost considerations? The reality is that any decent 9mm ammunition will feed, function, and fire just fine in our pistols. Uh, and it should. That should be your expectation. Uh, with that said, you know, I would try to stay away from steel case ammo if I could, but I mean, really, you would have to shoot a whole lot of it to, you know, really have some of the negative impacts of uh, maybe some additional wear on the feed fire function components of the ejector and extractor. Um, it's certainly a little underpowered, which isn't great, but for practice ammo, get what you can get and shoot the gun a lot. And if it's defensive ammo, you know, pick a mainstream load in kind of one of the common bullet weights and you should be fine. So that's the kind of high level ammo talk. But now let's talk about the more nerdy aspect of like, you know, what are the sights regulated for? What's going to shoot to point of aim? I will just go ahead and say it. It doesn't really matter. So it's more about you. That's what's going to affect point of impact more than our site set up, and I want to explain uh, really why that's true, okay? So um, let's first just define terms. Accuracy, right? People use the term accuracy a lot, and I think sometimes it gets confused with precision, so let's take a minute and just define those really quick. Here I have a target, and I go and I shoot a group, and it looks like that. Super nice tight group, but it's all down in the corner, and that would be a very precise shot group but not a very accurate one. Then I shoot another group, and that would be a very, not a very, that would be an accurate group, but not a very precise one. So point of aim and point of impact are generally the same. I was aiming at the middle, and I mostly hit the middle, so that's accurate. Uh, but it's not precise. It's not necessarily repeatable, right? And then we have what we want, ideally, to see which is both accuracy and precision, right? Okay, so when I talk about accuracy, what I'm talking about is point of aim and point of impact matching. Precision should be built into the quality of the ammunition and the quality of the handgun. So our guns are precise, the barrels lock up the same way, they'll put their rounds in the same place. You're asking, how do I hit the target, right? So we're gonna talk about that, accuracy. Precision is is not really as relevant to this conversation. Okay, accuracy. All right, every time I talk about ballistics and when I'm thinking about ballistics problems, I find it's helpful to draw kind of the same diagram. And, and this will be review for probably many of you, but we'll just use it as our little case study for nine millimeter, okay? Because you normally see it more with rifle rounds. That is the shooter's eyeball. And from the shooter's eye, extends an imaginary line that is perfectly straight and goes toward the target and it is called the line of sight, right? Now the shooter is presumably looking through sights and so we'll use iron sights in this example. So they're lining up a rear sight and they're lining up a front sight which are on a plane on the top of the slide that is generally parallel to the line of sight. And then below that you have the barrel. Now. I'm drawing the barrel at an upward angle, a very exaggerated one, but uh, real world, the barrel does sit at a slightly upward angle, like that, okay? And from the barrel, 
extends an imaginary line that is also perfectly straight that is called the line of departure. So it is uh, obviously impossible for the bullet to fly in a perfectly straight line forever. It starts falling as soon as it leaves the muzzle. So the line of departure really defines the angle at which the, the projectile departs from the barrel, but we know that the, the bullet starts falling immediately. As soon as it leaves the muzzle, it is, it is getting uh, pulled toward the earth. Okay, so that defines then the trajectory, which is this parabolic, this parabolic track that the bullet follows as it flies through the air. Okay, so the line of departure defines how it starts, but it very quickly departs from the line of departure and it follows its own trajectory toward the earth. All right, so you'll notice that in this example, the bullet is crossing the line of sight right there, and it is also crossing the line of sight right there. So we have effectively two zeros, two moments in time. If this was an infinitely small tr track flying through the air when it would cross the line of sight, okay? Um, this is a more relevant way of thinking of things if we're talking about a rifle cartridge. So like, as, let's just say it's a, you know, a, a 16 inch uh, 556 carbine. We might assume that if you zero at 50, you also have another zero at about 250 and it could be a few inches high along the way, okay? Um, however, there are cases where, you know, the line of, or the, the trajectory of the round basically just comes up and kind of kisses, kind of kisses the line of sight, sort of like this, and then drops off. And so actually, if you look at a 5.56 trajectory zeroed at 100 yards, it's kind of how it works. It, it actually just kisses the line of sight and then there are technically two zeros in there, but they're so infinitely close together that it's really immaterial and you're, you're left kind of with one, with one uh, uh, zero, excuse me, zero point. So now let's talk about the nine millimeter. So we have all these theoretical science-y ideas about ballistics now. Let's, uh, let's draw the nine millimeters track and let's talk about why it really doesn't matter what bullet weight you shoot, okay? so. Um, the nine millimeter is departing from our muzzle and that's actually more how it behaves. It comes up and kisses the line of sight and then it drops off. Now, if you were to zero your sights at some crazy short distance, let's say it's, you know, three yards or something. Um, now technically that would create, you know, a, enough of an upward angle that you probably would have something closer to two real zeros. But I mean, for practical purposes, you know, what do we call zeroed? In my mind, it's kind of plus or minus two inches anywhere, right? It's a handgun, okay? So, uh, so in the case of the nine millimeter, you know, let's, let's actually look at the nine millimeter for a moment. Nine millimeter Luger cartridge, okay? What are the more common bullet weights? 115 grain, 124 grain, and uh, 147s, okay? There are certainly others, but we'll just look at those for a minute, okay? So then we have um, their velocities, and we'll call this, I don't know, 1,100 feet per second. That's probably 1,200 feet per second, and, and maybe this is, you know, 950 to 1,000, somewhere in there, okay? Um, now, you probably have heard the term ballistic coefficient, and the only time it even makes sense to really talk about it is in the context of a rifle, a, a, a rifle bullet. Um, we're going to use ballistic coefficient here just because it's, you know, uh, we're kind of taking this to the nerdy extreme for a, for a handgun, but I want to show you what it looks like. Um, but ballistic coefficient is essentially just kind of one round number that captures the, the efficiency of the projectile as it moves through the air. So the higher the ballistic coefficient, the more efficiently the, the projectile uh, moves through the air. Um, it loses velocity more slowly. It does, it does better in the wind and it drops less. So, you know, we want a high ballistic coefficient. Uh, and so this is why you see like, you know, 6.5 millimeter becomes, becomes a very popular cartridge because it's got a very high ballistic coefficient. It just happens to work out that way. Okay, so um, we're gonna, you know, throw some up here. I, this is probably, if we're talking about like a G1, for those of you who know, know what that means or care, um, you know, it's probably like one, I'm gonna say 120 to 130 maybe. Uh, this is probably about 140. 140 to, I don't know, 160, and this is probably around 200. That'll be ballpark for us, okay? So 
in the in the case here of our nine millimeter bullet, um, Shadow Systems we do zero our pistols at 15 yards. Okay, so we have, have designed our sighting solution to be dead on, uh, or as close to dead on as possible at 15 yards. Okay, and that's and and we usually, by the way, for our testing, we usually use a 124 grain bullet just because look, it's kind of in the middle, and I happen to like the recoil impulse of a 124. So if you have to go shoot 10,000 of them, you might as well kind of enjoy it. So you know, 124 is what we usually shoot, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so here's what I mean. If we're dead on zeroed right here at 15 yards, if you look at the actual ballistic trace of these different configurations, these different uh, 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 bullet weights and velocities, uh, folks, it's about within an inch all the way out to 50 yards, okay? So, uh, you know, at 25 yards, this might as, might as well all be, that was more of a theta, this might as well all be zero, all right? At seven yards, remember, the differential between the height of that front sight and the center line of the bore on a, on a shadow pistol is about 653. That's ballpark. Um, what that means is, at seven yards, you're within a quarter inch. If you're zeroed at 15, you're within a quarter inch at seven yards. 15 yards, you're zeroed. You know, 25 out beyond, really, you don't even start thinking about it until you're like way out there. So at 50 yards, I'm sorry, I should have done this. At 50 yards, you're at about one to two inches, closer to one inch, right? And at 100 yards, we're talking about 10 inches of drop, maybe a little less, okay? So my point is, at most of these distances, you, you really, with the naked eye, can't even necessarily discern that much of a differential. So as a general rule, regardless of what ballistic you know, uh, solution is in, this, is in the cartridge you're shooting, they're all basically the same, okay? Yes, we zero at 15 yards, but guess what? If you shoot at seven yards, it's still gonna seem like it's zeroed, okay? It, you know, quarter inch low. Most people aren't shooting quarter inch groups at 100, or uh, quarter inch groups at seven yards to even be able to perceive that, right? 25 yards, you're still pretty much zeroed. All right, so I only share this because, you know, I think sometimes people really get into the minutia and I love the enthusiasm of wanting to like really use the best ammo and get the best result. And you guys should know, I should tell you, hey, 15 yards is where we zero. But I mean, these sites are, are, are uh, gonna keep you within, you know, minute of eyeball out to about as far as you can see reasonably something that small, okay? so. Um, I hope that's helpful. You know, uh, the main thing is go out and shoot, right? It's, you know, it's, it's not the nerdy ballistics or whatever. It's just the shooter, right? You got to go out and practice. You got to find out what works well for you. Um, you know, the only maybe caveat here to this conversation would be, I guess there's probably two. Uh, one is, you know, if you put an optic on a gun, you are raising the line of sight a little bit higher above the bore line. Does that result in a little more of an offset, a little more extreme of an angle of departure uh, or line of departure? Yeah, it does. Maybe if you're zeroed at 15 yards, maybe at seven yards now, instead of being a you know, quarter inch low, just barely, now you're three quarters of an inch low or something. Um, so, you know, it does make a little tiny bit difference, but these are handguns people and you're really not going to see it in any practical application. Okay. Um, so optics changes the equation a tiny bit, but generally it's still the same principle. Okay. Um, and then the only other caveat would be, you know, there are some guns that just don't like certain loads, right? So, you know, you may discover that just for whatever reason, you know, I, Federal HST doesn't shoot well in your gun. Can't say I can explain that, right? Because um, there's a lot of things happening in terms of internal ballistics, right? There's lots of things that can happen or can affect how, uh, um, uh, how consistent a projectile flies through the air out of a given gun. But I'll say this, in general terms, you know, ammunition nowadays is very concentric and very consistent from round to round and it's all pretty much gonna print where you put the sights. If you're having accuracy issues, as much as I hate to say it, you know, I, I would start by looking at your shooting and that's always been the root cause of accuracy issues for me 
with handguns. With rifles, it would maybe be different, but with handguns, definitely. Um, I would suggest, you know, uh, looking at making sure you're not flinching, right? So pre-ignition flinch is when you jerk the trigger anticipating recoil. You've seen people probably do it when they're at slide lock and they don't realize it and they yank the trigger and they do that routine. Um, you can kind of cure that with lots of dry fire, uh, certainly with, uh, you know, mixing some uh, dummy rounds into your magazine when you're at the range and, you know, it's, it's always very apparent when you hit that dummy round and you have to learn, like, I just have to relax and let this round go off and let it surprise me and, and not have, you know, anticipate the recoil. So I'm only mentioning these marksmanship aspects of it because that's really what tends to cause people to shoot poorly more than, oh, my sights are regulated at 26 and a half yards instead of 12.2 yards or whatever, okay? So, um, there's my nerdy ballistics lesson for the day for the 9mm. It's not very exciting because it's a pistol cartridge, but the main thing to know is, you know, aim dead on and fire for any of the distances when you might reasonably be using a handgun. Okay? All right. As always, we're here for you. If you need something, give us a shout. We love talking to customers, and uh, we'll see you again next Tuesday. Thank you.